Hey everybody, welcome back to T. Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining. Man, it's been a long time since I've done any barbecue. Today's the day. I'm firing up my Weber Smoky Mountain and I'll show you how I set it up here in a minute. But uh, we're going to be doing a pork butt. I feel like some pulled pork sandwiches. It's a beautiful overcast day, so it's not going to be super hot. And uh, I'm just going to bring you all along just to watch me do a pork butt. So hope you all enjoy the video. And uh, y'all stick around, I'm going to show you this Weber Smoky Mountain, how to get it set up for cooking. I've got my charcoals and my chimney right here, really hot. As you can see, I've got three chunks of hickory down in there, just laying on the coals. And I put the hickory where the vents are on the Weber Smoky Mountain base. And I kind of put a little hole in the center, and that's where I'm going to dump these charcoals. Just like so, folks. So again, my wood is, I've got a vent here, here. And here, vents are wide open right now, and that's what we're going to do, and uh, man, it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to put the rest of this together, show you that real quick. Just like that. I got my lid here. Put my lid on that for you. Now I am going to add some water in here to the water pan. So I'm going to get a pitcher of water and dump that in the water pan. And um, I, I, I always cook with the water pan, uh, some kind of liquid in it. Anyway, let me put some water in here. And it's probably going to take a half hour or so for it to come up to temp. I'm going to try to cook 275 to 300 because this is close to an 8-pound pork butt. And it usually takes a couple of hours per pound. I don't want to sit around here and wait for 14, 15 hours for this thing to cook. So I'm going to, and that, that two hours per pound is at 225 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to jack the temp up on this, 275 to 300. We're going to try to cook in that range, and hopefully we'll have this done in about 10 hours or so. So we'll see. Anyway, I've never cooked a pork butt this fast. <laughs> We're going to do it together, folks. Y'all stick around. All right, let's get this pork butt prepped up. And uh, I'm going to use some rub that I've been wanting to try. One of my subscribers sent me this. Um, it's from a local Texas company out of Allen, Texas. What is it? It's uh, Simply Unique is the name of it. And the, uh, the company that makes it is BigCountryBarbecue.com. Get you a nice close-up right there. We're going to check it out, though. And, uh, man, I, I, honestly, I forget who sent this to me, but I do appreciate it. You know, I like trying rubs. Oh, this smells good. Let's get a little bit... I smell the sweetness in there. It's got some uh, Demera sugar in there. Looks like it's got some paprika or cayenne or something in there. Let's give it a taste here. Got some salt in it. Oh man. Yeah. I get the sweet first of all. Man, that's good. Um, it's sweet like a pork rub should be. And then you get some heat right in the back of your throat. That's good, folks. Mm. Let's rub this down on the pork butt. I'll show you what we're working with. And I checked the weight. The weight on this pork butt is uh, about seven, um, I'm sorry, eight and a half pounds. And for pork butts, I just generally like to put a little mustard. So I got some French's yellow mustard here. Kind of coat it down. Don't need a ton of it, but again, just coat it on all sides. And man, it sure does smell good out here with my Weber Smoky Mountain going. Got some hickory wood on there. I think I mentioned that before. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. Okay. See if I can put some of this on here. I'm not sure how much to put on here. We're just going to kind of wing it, folks. Yeah, just coat each side as you normally would. Spin this around so you can see what's going on here. Oh, yeah. Well, I love the color on this. Must have quite a bit of pep paprika in there. Yes, indeed. We definitely gonna do a taste test on this. 
gorgeous. All right, let that sit there for about another 10, 15 minutes while my Weber Smoky Mountain is still coming up the temp. She's at 225 right now, so it doesn't have very much longer to try to get up to 275. And, um, and that's another thing too. Let me get you up here where I can see you. That's another thing on this Weber Smoky Mountain. Usually when it gets about 25, 35 degrees from my target, I'll usually start closing some of the vents down on the bottom. Um, again, depends on the weather and the wind and all that stuff, but generally I'll close them about halfway and let that temperature start settling in where I want it. And then when I get it where I want it, like I'm trying to cook 275 to 300, so somewhere in that range, I'll start making fine adjustments to the bottom vents to maintain that temp. Um, though if the top vent is wide open all the time. That's the way I cook with it. So anyway, bring you back here once I get up to about 275 to 300, which won't be very much longer, so y'all stick around. All right, we're two hours in. That's what the pork butt's looking like. It's looking really, really nice. And you notice I am cooking fat side up. At these higher temps, if that fat's going to melt and drip down through the pork meat, it's going to be great. Well, we are five hours in. Just wanted to show you what I've got here now. Internal temp is 167, and I'm holding 273 right now. I've been cooking this the whole five hours uh, at about 290 to 300 degrees. It's starting to drop a little bit, so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of stir up the coals in the bottom a little bit. I'll show that to you here. Let's check on that pork butt and see how it's doing. Let me get some. Let me get me a little. Got me a little fireplace poker right here. We're gonna stir it up a little bit here in a minute. minute. Okay. Like that. Let's set it to the side. Oh man, I wish I could smell this. It's really smelling good, folks. It's looking really nice. Fat's rendering out real nice. Still got water in the water pan. Yeah, let's see if we can stir up some of these coals just a little bit. See if we can kick that heat back up. And I have also been um, uh, opening the vents. I mean, uh, the vents on the bottom are wide open right now, so I may have to close them down just a little bit. And I still do have plenty of hot coals in here. So we're good with coals. But, uh, you know, if, if cooking at this higher temp were to make the coals burn faster, which it will, all you would need to do, all you would need to do is, uh, and I'll show you what I've got down here. Here, let me show you what I've got in here. See if you can see down in there. So that's where I'm. That's where I'm at right here. That's the water pan. See if I can get down in there. You see all the coals down in there. So I got, still got plenty of coals in there. You see, I got plenty of water in the water pan. So that's what we're looking like now, folks. But uh, yeah, cooking at this higher temp will definitely make the coals burn quicker. But also I wanted to note, note for each of you that, uh, that are trying this quick, you know, hot cook method for a pork butt, if you do have to stir the coals up, leave the lid off for a second and let the ashes get out because you don't want to get the ashes on your meat. So I think we're good. If I do need to put some more coals or anything on there, I'll make those some lump of charcoal or something on if it drops down below say 260 I'll probably add a little bit more just to crank up the heat a little bit we'll see how it goes though and um, when the internal temp where we're at right now we're at uh, 167 internal and I really didn't notice any kind of stall at cooking at this higher temp let me put the lid back on I don't want all that heat escaping but uh, when when you're cooking at the higher temps um, I've heard it described as like a train going up a hill, a long train going up a hill. At the higher temps, it's got a lot of momentum and it's going to be a lot faster to get over the top of the hill, which is the stall. Okay. At a lower temp, like 225, 220 Fahrenheit, it takes longer to get up to that, that crest of the hill and then it'll, it'll carry on the temp. So uh, I really didn't notice any kind of stall. If it was, it went through it so quick. So we're clicking right along, folks. This train's moving. This pork butt's looking fine. Smelling terrific, too. Ah, I, miss, I miss cooking on my Weber Smoky Mountain. Miss cooking on my Yoda. Miss cooking on my Kamado Joe. Life is going to be great this summer, folks. And uh, anyway, we'll check back here in a little bit. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to mention. When the temp of the pork
pork butt gets to about 180, somewhere in that range, I'm gonna start putting some stuff on it, you know, the spritzing it and stuff. I'm not, I haven't spritzed it or done anything to it right now. So we'll bring you back when we start doing the spritzing and putting some other stuff on there. I'll see what I've got in the pantry or in the fridge to put on it. You know, just give it a little layers of flavor. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's been six hours. It's time to spritz on some juice. You can use apple juice or whatever kind of juice you want. Uh, apple cider would work. Just spritz it up a little bit. And uh, this is six hours in. This is what it looks like six hours. The internal temp is 178 Fahrenheit right now. We're just going to let it keep going. And we'll be back to show you some more here in a little bit. Hey everybody, it's been about an hour now since you last saw this. So it's seven hours in. And I did spritz it a half hour ago. So I spritzed it when y'all saw me last and I spritzed it a half hour ago and now I'm spritzing it again. So this is the third time I'm spritzing it. And uh, I'm also going to put on some sriracha. A little sriracha. We're just going to, if I can get this open here. Come on. Come on, sriracha. It don't want to cooperate sometimes. There we go. Now, a little sriracha. And just put whatever you have in your fridge or your pantry, you know. Um, I like tiger sauce on this. But since I don't currently have any tiger sauce, well, actually, I do. I just don't want to open it. I'm just going with some of this sriracha. Just going to give it a nice flavor. Again, just use whatever you have on hand. It's not going to hurt anything at all. In fact, you may even discover that all these flavors add a lot of unique flavor to something that you've tasted all your life and you say, huh, I like it with this. Layers of flavor, man. Layers of flavor. That's what I love. So that's what we got right there. And uh, also wanted to let you know, see if I can get this in the shot. Oh, I'm going to a different camera angle because my sunlight's changing out here. And uh, let's see what I got here. I'm going to widen the shot here for you so you can kind of see this, I hope. Uh, the top temperature, I've got it set for 198, but it's 180 now. And it has been 180 for the past hour. So I'm thinking that I misspoke earlier when I said it, it went through the stall. It's definitely stalled right now. And I guess it's stalled at a higher temp because I'm cooking at a higher temp. But we're going to get through it. Um, each pork butt's different. You know, some of them stall at 150, some stall at 160, you know. 170. I, I had a stubborn one that, man, it took me uh, probably 16, 15, 16 hours to cook. It was like a seven pounder. Anyway, each one's different. When you hit the stall and the temperature stops rising, just let it go. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't do anything to it. Um, just let it go. It will eventually start climbing again. And again, mine's at 180 internal Fahrenheit. I'll bring you back here whenever the stall quits. Uh, it's been, what, seven hours now, I think? So I'll bring you back here. We'll let you know how long that stall lasted. It's been lasting an hour already. All right, everybody, we've been uh, nine hours now, and I, I had to add some more charcoal, and I didn't have any regular brisk briquettes, so I added some lump charcoal. This is uh, Forest Lumps, www.forestlumps.com. This is their lump charcoal. And I'll tell you, this stuff burns really hot, but it's really, really good. I, I love the smell of it. And uh, I have to thank my buddy David who uh, he has his own YouTube channel, Grill Warrior. I'll put a link down below and also his uh, website where you can buy some of this and other barbecue related items. You can buy some of his stuff from his website. It is grill, grillandmagic.com. I'll put a link down below. Um, I'm gonna use some of this Texas rib candy. This is mango habanero. I'll put a little bit of this on there. Again, we're at nine hours now and my pork butt is finally past the stall man it took like three hours but uh, we're finally past the stall here and this is the fat side so I'm I'm not really super going crazy on that but uh, I mainly want to get this down here on the sides well look at the way this rib candy just makes makes that shine check that out folks Put some over here on the other side oh yeah this is some wonderful stuff right here. 
And later on, when I make those pulled pork sandwiches, I'm, I'm thinking I can show you a picture of it. I'm going to use uh, my buddy David's. He's got a vinegar-based sauce, barbecue sauce. So I'm going to use some of that. I'll show you that here in a little bit, too. But again, nine hours. Let's see where we're at here. We're at uh, 183, and of course, temps 160 inside on the grill because it's uh, lids off. But that uh, that forest far as lumps man that's some good stuff man i'm gonna use that in the future thanks to david i appreciate you sending that to me y'all go check out david grill warrior man grill warrior on youtube again i put a link down below if y'all need it and his website uh, grillingmagic.com all right everybody i'm finally reading 198 on my probe here so let's check it and let's see it's always a good idea to double check make sure oh yeah Yes, indeed. Oh, it's like going through like butter. Let's see what this actually reads here. It's reading 195 right there. Tell you what, man. I think that's done. All right, I'm going to take it inside. I'm going to wrap it with some foil. Kind of tint it. Let it cool off a little bit, and we'll pull it here in a second. All right, everybody. This is what we got right here. We got... Pork butts rested here for probably about 30 minutes. I'm just peeling the fat cap away because that's what was on top. Just like so. And that's alright if you take a little bit of the bark with it. That's, that's not going to hurt anything. Now what you want to do, get you a couple of uh, utensils and you want to start shredding this stuff up. And the best thing i found to do is again just kind of scrape away as much of the fat as you can. Of course, if you want, if you want the fat on there, that's perfectly fine with me. But you take this, you know, put it in here, kind of do it like this. I'm gonna tell you what, man. Y'all check out that bark on there. Isn't that just a gorgeous, gorgeous sight right there? But any of the fat I like to take off of there. You can shred it by hand, or you can shred it by fork, or whatever else. Some of uh, some of those bear claw looking things however you want to do it and this is just absolutely amazing there's a little fat right there and that's that's the the good thing about the pork the butt here it's uh it's got a lot of fat in, and that tends to help it stay juicy throughout the cook because it's a very long cook save that bark though that bark's jamming Karen loves the bark that's bark. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna finish doing the rest of this, but I'm gonna tell you what, folks. Let's taste a little bit of this for you, real quick. Just y'all bear with me here, real quick. Mm. That rub I put on there, that's some jamming stuff. Really, really good. You see how greasy it is too. That's from that fat. It's good stuff. But what you gotta do? got to put you some good vinegar based barbecue sauce to make pulled pork sandwiches which is what I'm gonna do Let me back you out a little bit so y'all can see me there we go grillingmagic.com folks my good friend David I'm telling y'all check it out grillingmagic.com and again grill warrior on YouTube he's a certified uh, KCBS judge he knows his stuff when it comes to barbecue y'all check him out so we're going to make some sandwiches here. I'll do some pictures here at the end of the video. I appreciate you watching. Y'all give me a thumbs up if you like it. And I hope y'all share the video. And when you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. <laughs> See y'all next time, everybody.